r slash ask reddit what's something that's not a cult but feels like a cult aa i am in aa i like aa it saved my life but it is cultish a lot of the time also in aa also love aa also agree aa is great if you let it become your new addiction it will be pretty cult like some people forget we got sober so we could function in normal society the herbalife organization they were charged with being a pyramid scheme but they still operate in a similar way there are several people i grew up with who became hooked on it and they definitely act like they're in a cult my niece was involved in that shit she was constantly posting shit tear memes about how herbalife wasn't a cult if you have to constantly say you're not in a cult that's a bad sign some workplaces the ones that push the we're all family here attitude especially aka you won't be promoted mayo exactly you're part of our family and family helps each other out with as little compensation as possible marching band if you know you know one thing that still blows my mind to this day is that people pay thousands of dollars to be in drum corps bands so many questions when i first learned about it oh so it's like being in an orchestra where it's your job to play and be the best in the world nope you pay them actually oh well at least you'll be basically famous or at least really well known for playing that instrument no the only people who even know the name of your core or even what drum and bugle core is in general are other core members their family or high school marching band kids and their teachers totally agree with you i was in marching band in high school and just graduated earlier this year i wanted to do drum course in seventh grade but decided not to in my last year of marching band people are paying to learn that's what it's about but i barely have enough money for that after i got a job and would much rather spend those years of my life earning money and planning for my future and the hours that they make you rehearse in high school we would have banned camp for two weeks and it was 11 hours a day six days a week I think drum corps does more and it's for months at a time. I still have friends who wanna do that. MLMs but especially Mary Kay. I went to her convention once as the guest of a consultant because she was trying to get me to join. It was very step forward. Also, she didn't tell me you were expected to dress up so I showed up in jeans and a hoodie. Haha, <laughs> I had the exact same experience. Showed up looking normal and realized these were not my kind of people. I suspect that is part of the plan. Get people to arrive underdressed so that they feel like they're in the presence of success. High school clubs where you spend a lot of time together. Marching band and theater are the ones that come to mind for me. This is extremely true of theater. Even into the professional ranks. Too many gurus. Too little pay. Too many abusers. Yeah, I studied theater for two years in college and it got to the point where there was definitely a cult-like atmosphere. When I decided to leave and study engineering, instead, there was even a girl who sat me down and told me that God gave me the gift of acting and that by choosing to ignore that gift I was ignoring God. Yeah, shit was weird. I'm a lot happier in engineering. CrossFit. A friend of mine does crossfit and I made the mistake of saying I'm glad you found something that works for you. Forgot a tirade of why it works for everyone. Has he told you that he does crossfit today? Nutri boom. Boom boom edit. Whoa. Thanks my dudes for the updates and the silver. I love you all. Edit number 2. Thank you for the second silver. Love you all. 3. Boom. Boom. Just by the by. Debbie Stovelman is happy, healthy and alive. Working for a non-profit, they tend to refer to employees as a family working for a cause, which wouldn't be culty on its own, but they definitely use it to manipulate employees to work themselves half to death and set a culture where boundaries are thought of as not being invested in the mission. They also use your passion for the mission to justify working you harder slash paying you less. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely love my job and what I get to do, but I'm old enough to see what's been done to me over the years. The rotating door of young employees who are worked to burn out and replaced though, I feel bad for. It's a hard lesson to learn. Edit. Wow. Ro. Ro. Thank you all for the genuinely kind comments, feedback and commiseration. I had no idea this comment would resonate with so many people. I truly appreciate that you took the time to share your stories with me. 
Got told we weren't paid a lot because we were doing something we were passionate about. I was one of those that had no boundaries and burned out. Getting my masters to become a NP manager and help stop the burnout culture madness. I'm not really that passionate about what we do. Can I have a raise? Double quote. The Holy Church of CrossFit. I'm a member of the not quite as well known Church of Orange Ethery. If you ask us about proper rowing technique, we'll all start chanting at you. Legs. Core. Arms. Arms. Core. Legs. Rowing is 60% leg drive. Power. Patience. Patience. When I first joined too, five years ago, I came home with my little folder of information and coupons to local businesses, a tote bag, a car magnet, and the heart rate monitor, and said to my husband, I think I just joined a cult. Some families, if you're inside the family, you are accepted no matter what and you don't question anything. If you're outside the family, you are treated politely but don't really matter much unless you act as part of the family. If you were part of the family, but betray them, you are excommunicated and they spread lies about you. Whenever my wife and I see signs in people's houses that say something like, this is a happy family, or this family lives, laughs, and loves, we like to call it household propaganda, we tend to picture those families the way you describe here. I ducking hate shit like that, I have a wife and two kids, why would we need wording on the wall to reinforce something that should be natural within a family, those signs are just tacky, my in-laws got us a sign like that, we put it on storage and quietly sold it to someone who wanted it a few years later. Some fandoms, especially K-pop fandoms. My Little Pony, too. I watched that show for a couple seasons back in the day, after wondering why several of my friends were hyping it up, including one that really surprised me by liking the show. Friendship is magic. Pretty good show. Quite funny. Took a peek or two or three into the fandom, though, and, Jesus Christ, it was very well. No wonder people who watch the show have a bad reputation. Goddamn. My two young daughters love MLP but there is no way I'll ever let them google anything or watch a video on YouTube because of the sexual side of the fans. I don't want my 8 year old stumbling across some 30 year old man's fantasy about impregnating Pinkie Pie. The Order of the Arrow and the Boy Scouts. Technically an approved organization. But it's cultish as hell. It's funny. Because they make you do this big induction camp out. And the day after I got back from mine. My English teacher gave a lecture on how to identify a cult, and it hit a lot of red flags. Edit. Good lord. Apparently nothing gets people talking like reminiscing about being in a cult. I thought someone was calling me because I was getting so many messages. Can't believe I had to scroll this far to find any mention of BSA. Regular scouts can be culty depending on the troop council, especially when you get into summer camp cliques. But OA is above and beyond culty on purpose. My regular troop was pretty good, one of the best experiences of my life. I went to one OA event and decided never again. Call me Kevin subscribers. It's not a cult, I promise. MM yes definitely not the cult of Jim Pickens. I immediately thought this one too. The most wholesome and loving cult in existence. Based around an insane mass murderer with a love of elaborate basements. Edit. For anyone confused. The mass murderer is a character in The Sims 4 named Jim Pickens. The YouTuber is a lovely guy. All murders and basements are purely fictional. Mega churches. The ones that air on TV with a crowd that rivals sports teams, owns sports arenas and has its pastors fly in private jets. There, I said it. The televangelists. This doesn't work here. The post said. That aren't actual cults. Read it sometimes. Sometimes? Bit of an understatement. Time to sort by controversial. I didn't know about that cult. Curly girl method groups. Flat iron. Jail. Hair dye. Jail. Sulfates. You write to jail. Silicones. Write to jail. Right away. No deep conditioning. Believe it or not. Jail. We have the best hair in the world because of jail. Wash it too often. Write to jail. Wash not enough. Believe it or not. Also jail. Edit. We have special jail for people who pay to buy reddit awards. Forced school songs that talk about being a part of the school forever. 
school spirit. I can understand it for university, but not for high school or below, which I didn't have a choice in attending. I went there because it was the school I ended up being sent to. Ergo I should be proud of it. I don't get it. I mean it's the same thing of being born somewhere and being proud of it. I love my city of Milwaukee but it's not like I had much of a choice. I just went through at least two dozen top replies and shocked Burning Man isn't listed. Y'all. Burners are ducking weird. Source. I was one and one who has critical thoughts about how things work yet have found ideas are only cool if you're popular. This is fascinating. I've wanted to go for a long time for the music and art, but could not stand the vibe people got about it who went. I remember friends going and suddenly totally changing their friend groups, and a friend saying he's cool, he's a burner. It's really sad to me though. I'm a lover of less commercial electronic music and would love to see the amazing art and cars. But I feel like I'd find the burners the most exhausting aspect. Only really because they preach being yourself and yet they all kind of look act the same. I love the event but duck do I hate people whose whole personality is being a burner. I never join a theme camp. I camp out by 8 and K usually with just one other person in my group. And I mostly go out at night alone to see the lit up art. Occasionally I'll swing by a giant theme camp. But otherwise I just wander through smaller camps and drink at random bars where I like the people. I've had really good luck overall with meeting good people so I'd definitely recommend going but just do your own thing and avoid the plug and play and large theme camp types. Sororities. Yup, also fraternities. Love my fraternity. But we can be a little culty sometimes. I used to teach composition at a Divi University and for the persuasion paper one student wrote this brilliant takedown of everything that was wrong with her sorority. It was her best work of the semester and she got an A. And I asked her when she was going to share it with her sisters and she turned 12 shades of red and said, Never. I couldn't. Multi-level marketing. I recently had a conversation with one of my friends who's obsessed with being a girl boss so she joins all these pyramid schemes all the time. Her. I just joined Blabla. I already forgot the name. Me. What is that? Her. It's a company that does multi-level marketing. It's so great. You should see how much money the people at the top have. They basically became millionaires in a couple of years me. You joined another pyramid scheme? Her. Ugh. OMG it is not a pyramid scheme. It's an MLM. People get those two confused all the time. MLMs are serious this is a real business and it makes lots of money. They taught us all about the difference between MLMs and pyramid schemes during orientation. I hate that people don't get the difference. Sigh. Pure pyramid schemes don't have a product. That's the only real difference. Most people are still going to lose money. Peloton. Seriously, my dad hasn't stopped talking about it since getting it a year ago and went so far as to buy me one for Christmas this year, which is super generous and my fat ass will totally benefit, but feels like I'm being indoctrinated into something. The instructors are really intense and say culty things. I think the idea is to physically torture you to the point that you don't notice you're being programmed to spread peloton gospel to anyone who will listen. I've been so bored that joining a cult where I get hotter sounds okay though. My mom and I got bikes this year. I love it. And I love the community. But yeah it's totally a cult. Elon Musk's fan followers. Funny thing is he clearly had a social media campaign running to change his image for the better. At first everyone pretty much knew he was part wacko. Then he gets on the junior podcast. Smokes weed. Then all of a sudden he is this grand meme lord who browses reddit and thus is great. Texas A&M University edit. My first golden platinum thank you all so much. Also I am an Aggie myself. In high school I made a presentation on the traditions at A&M. I covered as many traditions as I could find. My mom went there. My uncles went there. My granddad went there. So early on in life I knew I was going to go there. Right after I finished someone said that sounds like a cult. Edit. I didn't end up going there. My grades were not that good and the university I ended up going to had a better physics program for me. As an Aggie, A&M has way too many traditions. More than I can keep track of. The running joke is that if it happens once it's a coincidence, and if it happens twice it's a tradition. Not to mention A&M basically has their own language. Inusanus. What tipped you off? The Latin. The constant themes of death and impermanence. Or the low chanting? 
P sauna. Flat Earth so see to their inability to understand that the Earth is not flat baffles me to oblivion. IKR it's absurd people still think the Earth is flat. It's queer, in this year, that we still appear, to hear about fear, of the sphere, there's no cheer, there's no beer, just a solitary tear, Richard Gere. Any fandom if you go deep enough kinda feels like a cult. These past few months I have gotten super into hollow life, and well, all hail Koro. Edit, okay wow, this comment below up, thank you kind strangers for the awards and all the likes. I honestly didn't think my first comment to get so many likes on this subreddit would be about hololive, but I wouldn't have it any other way in hindsight. To answer one question I have gotten a bunch, the way most people fall down the rabbit hole of hololive is that they watch one English sub gaming video or music cover from someone in the group, and from there they kind of just fall down the rabbit hole of clicking related videos over and over again. But then because you watched so many videos your recommendations become nothing but hololive. And before you know it you are subscribed to a Japanese doggo. Waking up at odd hours to watch a 2 plus hour stream. Usually in a language you can't even fully understand. But you do it because you want to support them in any way you can. For me, the video that sent me down the rabbit hole was this one of Koro and playing cooking simulator. I just wanted to see more of this hilarious doggo, and even now when I follow more VTubers, she is still my favorite. The worst part about that is that those obsessed people are the ones that ruin the experience for the normal fans and get them targeted as being bad. It's happened so many times and we still get bashed for it despite kicking those bad ones out of the community. Eating disorders and any pro-eating disorder sites. Those who have an eating disorder often view their disorder as their best friend giving them names like Anna and Mia. And then there are those sites to make it worse. They treat eating disorders like they are sacred and often post rules in a cultish way. One site I used to visit in my dark days even had the 10 commandments of Anna now if that doesn't sound cultish idk what does. Don't even make me start about the weightless coaches on there. Edit. I'm glad to read the stories of everyone here who overcame their eating disorder. I'm proud of you. It's a hard journey at any point. I hope that many more people will recover from that disorder. That's why I'm glad that people are here to spread awareness. Thank you. This shit tricked me into it when I was younger. After being called fat for years. Which like I was maybe a bit chubby but I have doctor's visits each month because of chronic illness and I was always at a normal healthy weight but anyway. I was like I'm going to start high school and I don't need that shit again so I looked up how to lose weight quickly. And ended up on a pro other site. It had a forum where people could chat and share experiences and also motivational letters from Ada and Mia. Well, a lonely, insecure girl at the start of puberty. You can imagine what happened. I'm a healthy, in regards to weight, adult now and still have bad days where I can barely eat. Those sites really ducked me up. These sites absolutely annihilated a depressed, anorexic teenage me. I wore a red bead bracelet all the time as some weird pledge to honor that I wouldn't eat found the bracelet a couple of years back and it was terrifying. It wouldn't fit my 9 year old daughter now. I was so, so sick and those sites just absolutely put hooks in every part of my vulnerable, screwed up little mind. I'm shocked looking back. I relapsed so many times because of material I came across from these sites. Salesforce. No, I don't want to build a community, go hiking or join a hundred online classes to learn the basics, make a couple of well explained, to the point training videos ffs. Politics. Lately. Yay people that go super hard for politicians are super culty lol. Diet culture. Cato. Pallia. Dash. Marga. Not the republicans but trump's wing on the extreme right. Especially now that the election is settled. Like I still see Trump flags all over. And there's this one guy who every Saturday for the last two months goes and stands on this kinda main but not really intersection with a megaphone screaming about Trump. The hardcore deaf community. I'm talking the kind who insists that being deaf isn't a disability. Intentionally seclude themselves from the hearing world. And protest against cochlear implants. A deaf guy checking in. 
I agree. I grew up in the hearing culture but have had my share in the deaf community and there are some groups that I have great distaste for due to this belief. Edit. I would like to clarify that the deaf community as a whole doesn't represent those kind of people. I understand their feelings and where they're coming from. We have gone through centuries of ostracism and discriminations and barriers. It's hard to not feel like we have to live in our own bubble in order to thrive and function as members of society in neutral on those issues including CIs. I think the deaf community is a wonderful thing and gives many folks a sense of belonging in a world that largely ignores them and their needs. What I don't appreciate is when some deaf folks act like the hearing folks are actively trying to make our lives hard or that we're superior to them. Disney. If you've ever known anyone who has worked at Disneyland, they will talk your ear off about how it's the happiest place on earth and how lucky they are to work there. Well, pre-pandemic. Islam. No you can't say the wholesome foreign religion is bad. You're a racist and aphobic. What do you mean this religion hates women and LGBT? Shut up no that doesn't fit the agenda. The Apple. Consumer base. Fan base. I don't know. They just feel like a ducking cult. Edit. And just like that. The defensive fan base crawls out of the woodwork to protest too much. Nailed it. You guys do have situational awareness. Right? Oh. Who am I kidding? Of course you don't. Also, gaming. Sometimes, I say this as someone who loves gaming, but would hesitate to call himself a gamer due to the negative connotation associated with the term. Beach body especially the coaches. Essential oils. We get it. You're a single mom and you want to work from home. But damn you guys sure drank the Kool-Aid. I have lived in Pennsylvania my entire life. And it would be hard to convince me that Penn State is not a cult. If you listen to people who have graduated Penn State you know. No other college is as good as Penn State. No other college has sports like Penn State. No other colleges teach subjects like Penn State. No other college has a building like Penn State. No other college allows their students to use the library like Penn State. No other college lets their students use the bathrooms like Penn State. No other college has a roof that stops rain like Penn State. No other college allows students to walk down the sidewalk like Penn State. If any other college has anything, you bet your ass Penn State has it at least twice as good. I hate college pride. And Penn State gets the most of it in my area. Edit. I'm getting all these comments further confirming the existence of the cult of the lion. No one teaches like Gaston. Plays sports like Gaston. Edit. My first ever award. Much appreciated friend. People who own Thermomix machines. Spend that much on an over elaborate food processor and I guess you need to double down but man. They just won't shut the duck up about how it changed their life. Oh cooking is Saru different for me now. Oh it's just Saru convenient. Having said that, I did once go to a Thermomix party, where they try to mind wash you into they're not a cult. Because the lady that invited me was recently divorced and pretty hot and I figured why not give it a shot. I never particularly liked her ex-husband, so could have been a multi bird stone throw. I barely made it out alive without my wallet being light and a couple of grand. Man. The sales pressure was intense. Oh my god I used to sell Thermomix for a US startup retailer thing. There's only one company that does that in the US but they fired me in a really weird way so duck their social media rules. I think one of the things people don't realize is that Thermomix is a MLM. We couldn't sell stock directly out of the store. We had to refer people to a rep in New York who would get the customer one. We were located in a mall so every once in a while someone from Thermomix would set up in our store and do cooking demonstrations. I was talking to one of the girls and she said she was actually a nurse and didn't work directly for Thermomix. She just got a kickback when they were sold. The actual machines worked and were pretty indestructible imo. But they made really small serving sizes and were kind of like the culinary eye equivalent of ridiculously over-engineered multi-tools that people at trashy seaside tourist traps try to sell 13 year old boy scouts. I tried to snag the display model once it broke, due to a customer dropping it. But apparently neither my store nor Thermomix actually owned it. It was some rondo owner that we gave it back to. Weird company. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.